Bear Essentials podcast gives older bears a place to gather for real talk regarding topics and issues that they can relate to. Here at The Bear Essentials, we aren't just having conversations. We are looking to provide actionable intelligence through real-life experience and expertise of our guests. Our mission is to build a strong community that elevates and motivates people to go beyond their limiting beliefs by helping them realize that getting older is not an excuse to hibernate on their goals, but a reason to work harder. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Charles Wallace. Today's guest is a former periodontal surgeon, stand-up comedian, blogger, and a men's executive coach. He also hosts a podcast of his own called Old Guy Talks to Me. His mission in life is to help men have a kick-ass life of their own. So without further ado, let's welcome Oris Komarnitsky to the show. But first, a word from our sponsor. The Bear Essentials Podcast is sponsored by Fire Beast Jerky. With flavors ranging from Tropical Flare to Sweet Reaper, Fire Beast has something for all jerky lovers. And with over 30 years of experience making small batch, big flavor jerky, Fire Beast is sure to deliver quality, affordable jerky directly to your doorstep anywhere in America. So head on over to firebeastjerky.com and be sure to use code BEAR10 at checkout and receive 10% off your order from Fire Beast, the heat that is sweet. Hi, Aris. Thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Charles. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, I appreciate it. Definitely, you offer a lot of insight and information that I think will be helpful to a lot of the folks that listen to this show. So thank you very much for that. My pleasure. So for for the audience, that obviously, who folks that don't know you, maybe let's start out with a brief introduction. Okay. Uh, for about uh, 33 years, I was a regenerative periodontal surgeon. I gave that up uh, four and a half years ago and uh, started a podcast and also uh, am a men's life coach. And uh, so that's what I'm doing with my time. I'm actually busier than I ever have been. My wife says she's never seen me work so hard. And uh, so I'm doing well. Uh, I'm 70 years old, married once for uh, 30 years, and uh, we have two kids that are out of the house. And uh, actually, they're doing data analytics. I should have mentioned that earlier. Uh, they're doing really well, and uh, so so that's kind of the, the brief synopsis. And uh, the other thing is, uh, I'm pretty much unfiltered, and I when I say some sometimes when I say stuff, I hear it myself for the first time. <laughs> Awesome. So, um, I mean, listen, I've obviously I've seen your website. I've seen and listened to a few podcasts that you've done and also your own podcast. And, you know, I think what jumped out at me right away was uh, a word I use when I see someone like you is, is vibrant. You're you're extremely vibrant. And I think that I look to someone like you as a definitely a benchmark for somebody like me. You know, I'm not as old as you. I'm in my 50s. But you being 70, it you know, I look at you and I say, you know what? That's that's the goal, you know? I want to age in a way that I'm still doing things and and you set a great example for that. So so thank you for that. Um Well, well thank you, Charles. <laughs> Yeah, I do no, have my ex and pain, so <laughs> don't don't we all? And I'm sure I'm sure you could tell me it'll probably just get worse as I get older. But hey, you know what? I'll 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 do it without complaining. So I guess the alternative is, you know, we know what the alternative is. So yeah. Um, all right. So you started out as, you know, I'm not even gonna try to say, but you were, you know, a dentist surgeon. Right. Mm-hmm. So how do you get into that? Is that something, you know, that happens or are, are you growing up and you, you know, that's something you think you want to do? Uh, actually, I never thought I wanted to do it, but I was at a point in my life where uh, I was out of college for a couple of years and I was thinking about medical school. I was thinking about law school. Uh, and those are, and still is, you know, really highly competitive times to get into both. And somebody said, I should look at dental school. And I looked at that. That was also competitive. Uh, and then I, uh, I was also working as a bartender, which was really a great party life. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. 
Uh, there's no doubt about it. But I looked around and I saw people that were in their 30s. And this is not anything against bartenders, but it was just like, I, that was not what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And I just said, okay, uh, I need to move on. And so I got accepted in a few dental schools and just it kind of just kind of happened. All of a sudden, next thing you know, I came out and I was a dentist and I was a general dentist for a couple of years and I went back to school and uh, became a, a, a periodontal surgeon. And uh, so I did that for about 33 years. And there was a time where I decided I, I was always been kind of a, a, a tip of the spear, early adapter of things. Uh, but there came a point in my career where I was no longer interested in doing that. And that's when I knew it was time to leave. I'll tell you, I think, and I, I give you credit for that because I think a lot of us have not only been there, I think a lot of people that even listen to the show are probably, are probably there now, right? They know mm -hmm. what they're doing is probably, they don't want to necessarily be doing it but it's, it's life. They're there and they do it. So, so that being said, when you start to know that it's not what you want to do, how do you start to transition away from that into what you want to do? Did you, did you know what you wanted to do? Uh, no, but I've always been kind of a, even, even when I was a dentist, I was, I was always a, a bit of a, a attention whore. I mean, I, I love being, I love, I love being, I, I love the sound of my own voice. Uh, that, that, that's not true, but that sounds good when I say that. Uh, so I knew I would always like to be, you know, I gave lectures, I lectured at meetings, things like that. And so I knew that I liked to, I always wanted also to be creative and to be to a certain extent in the information entertainment business, which is my podcast. Uh, you know, old guy talks to me is uh most of the times, there's only there's only been one subject that I have not been able to approach with a sense of humor, uh, and that's because it's such a horrible thing. It's uh, sex trafficking. Mm. Uh, you know that, that there's just, there's just nothing funny about it. it. It's a horrible. It's just a horrible, horrible uh, crime, and and that people commit against other people. And so that was the one that wasn't. Everything else, you know, we had we had fun talking about. Porn addiction. Porn addiction is really, you know, it's a funny subject. Uh, it, it, it isn't, it isn't. Uh, but, you, I mean, obviously you can make that really, really funny. And uh, sometimes I'm doing a special one, the one about porn addiction. My wife was my wife was listening. She's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, she only heard half the conversation. It was it was pretty uh, risque, I think is the word. That, that, that's, a, that's a nice genteel word. We can use risque. Uh, but yeah, but you, you get the picture of what uh, what was discussed there. Um, and actually, that's a major problem, um, uh, Charles. Uh, porn addiction um, is 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 such a problem in in young men and in older men. And and I just have a way. Uh, for some reason, people tell me stuff. I mean, this they just tell me stuff. And and you know, I was at a party, I was a birthday party, and I never expected to be talking to this sixty year old man about his inability to have an orgasm during intercourse. I mean, I just, that's just, just, you just, you just don't walk into a party and say like, oh, I'm going to go talk to that guy who's 60 years old about his inability to have an orgasm. And, <laughs> uh, but, and I just, I, that happens all the time. And I just accept that that's going to happen. And uh, what was interesting is this guy was you know, particularly fit. He was a lifeguard in Malibu, California on the beach. Uh, he was an airline pilot, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, I can't come. And, and my first question is, uh, how much porn do you watch? And he goes, a lot. I go, well, that's the problem. You're watching porn. <laughs> you're too much porn. Your brain's rewired. And you're not responding to normal sexual stimuli when you're with a woman. You know, it's it just, it, it, it's, uh, he, he said, yeah, it's been a real problem. I, I would say this though, right? And I don't, I, I mean, this is a compliment. I think you do come across as that kind of person that you could probably say anything to and you'll answer. Oh yeah. I know. Shit. I'm too old to worry about being appropriate. Uh, I don't really give a shit a lot of times. It's, I mean, it's not, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to be an ogre or be an asshole and things like that. But most of the time I just, I really don't care uh, what a lot of people think. Mm. Uh, I, I, I will be a gentleman. I'll be kind and whatever, but I don't really care 
I don't spend a lot of time worrying uh, about what people think. And that's sometimes funny when you get on some certain social media uh, uh, conversations is like, why do you care so much what I think? Hmm. Why do you, what, what, why do you, why do you, you don't need my approval? Why do you care so much what, what somebody else thinks? So, so I think that, but you know, when you're talking about mental health and, um, and Charles, one of the things, and, and this is going to circle back to, to one of the things we talked about. Um, and I appreciate you telling me that I'm vibrant, uh, cause I, I try to be and I work at it. Um, but one of the things that I did many years ago, and uh, I need to have my disclaimer. I'm not a physician. I'll consult with the appropriate healthcare person uh, before starting any course of therapy. Uh, but I'm a great believer uh, in testosterone optimization. Mm. And I don't know if you're familiar with the statistics about what's going on with men and testosterone, but it's dropping at an alarming rate. Um, a 60 year old man uh, today has about 15% less testosterone than 60 year old men 20 years ago. Uh, and this is occurring uh, not just with older guys, but also it's a big issue with younger men. And so I've been on testosterone optimization for over 25 years. Now, uh, when I first went on there, you know, now it's real popular and you got all these clinics which have their own issues. Um, but when I got on it, you know, my, my primary care physician, you know, saying, oh, you know, your balls are going to fall off, you can get a heart attack, you can get high blood pressure, you can get prostate cancer. You do that. I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so. And now uh, there's, you know, even though there's, there's actually a couple of uh, uh, consensus papers from the Mayo Clinic that talk about the safety of testosterone uh, and it's becoming more and more accepted in mainstream medicine, though you're, you're generally your primary care physician will not give you enough to make a difference in your life. But I credit a lot of my vibrancy uh, to uh, one, my attitude. But my attitude is supported by my by the testosterone. And uh, just kind of as an example, I went to New Zealand about three years ago uh, with my youngest daughter. It was uh, her high school graduation trip, which was a, a few years late. The scheduling was, was the issue. And um, I did not take my testosterone because I didn't want to cross the border, even though I, everything I do has a prescription. You know, I'm all, I'm, I don't do anything illegal. Uh, but I didn't want to take it. And, you know, like about day eight, um, my wife goes like, what's wrong? You're really negative. You normally don't have this negative. And day 10, I'm on the phone with her again. Like, did you take your testosterone? I go, no. Uh, she said, wow. Um, and the half-life of testosterone is, is about uh, uh, eight days. So, so that's, that's when it would be going down in my system. Uh, so I think that that's a, that's a you know, for men, um, is so important to, uh, be optimized in your testosterone. And the other thing that your, your doctors will tell you, which is, which is total non it's a nonsense is that the, the laboratory ranges for testosterone. Well, they had not been static. They've actually been going down. Mm -hmm. And so the high normal went from, I think, uh, 1100 to 960 just recently. And then the, the, the low normal went down too. So, and, and normal is not healthy. That's the, that, that's the other thing. Normal is, is not healthy. And so, so this is, this is the conundrum that uh, get in. And this also ha is happening to younger and younger men. Uh, one of the people I've interviewed on my podcast regarding this, I've, I've got about five or six interviews on testosterone optimization on my podcast, uh, was telling me that he is seeing men in their 20s and 30s with lower t baseline testosterone levels than men in their 50s and 60s. And you, 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 you see this, you know, uh, uh, I, I think I, I did a podcast or, you know, are men less manly now? And there's a lot of discussion about that. Women notice it too. Uh, and so, so this is, this is a, a, a problem uh, that's existing. That's often not addressed. And, and testosterone is really pretty inexpensive to get. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not expensive at all. Unless you go some of these one of these uh, big clinics where they load you up with a whole bunch of other stuff that you don't really need and shouldn't be taking actually, uh, but again, I'm not a physician, so consult with the appropriate healthcare professional. <laughs> and there's lots of good what they, they call them functional medicine doctors. These to be called anti aging doctors, but now they're called functional medicine doctors. So and you have trans, you know, I I've seen your picture your before and after you know you had a tremendous transformation. 
Yeah. And, but I, I listen, I'm glad you brought it up because it's something that I haven't yet, but it's something that I've actually been considering. And I'll, I'll say it here now is, you know, I notice still able to work hard, still training hard, but I know like, like I'll just say this, I, I mean, you're somewhat familiar with my story, like the weight I had lost and the transformation I, that I did, you know, I started that around age 47, I'll be 51 this year. And I'll say this to you and to anybody. I don't know if I started that just today, that same transformational journey that I undertook. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd get the same results, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest. I don't think I would. I, I think it would be a lot harder. I don't think it would be, I would get the same results. And I think that has to do with, honestly, it's, you know, I'll be four years older. And I think it has a lot to do with what what you just said. So I think it's, Look, I think the other thing is men, you know, you say about not being less manly, right? It's like, I think men in general, we feel like even speaking to a doctor is less manly, right? It's that old school thinking like, I don't, I don't Mm -hmm. need the doctor. Right. But I, no, I'm really glad you brought it up because I know even in my podcast, I've had some strength and conditioning coaches on. And one of the topics that come up a lot that is definitely to me, so related to testosterone optimization is as we old, um, sarcopenia, like losing strength over each decade and muscle mass, you know, like I think as men, it's just too much. I think we accept it. And I think we're looking back into that generation of men, our, our, our grandparents and things like that. And we see that example. And I think it doesn't have to be that way. And I think having people like you, other people made to a lesser extent is, is let's, let's get people thinking about this and, and and looking into it. So let me ask you this. If somebody's thinking about it, how do you start? Where do you go about starting that at? Um, a friend of mine wrote a book. I've been, he's been actually when I I've been a bit of self-promotion here. Go to my podcast. Listen to there's like about five or six uh episodes. Uh I'd start off with the ones with uh, Jay Campbell. Uh he he got a, he wrote a book you find it on Amazon. I can't remember I, I think it's called the Testosterone Optimization Bible. Jay's uh, we're pretty much neck and neck, you know, in a, or I should say in alignment on our thinking about testosterone. And he's, he's really knowledgeable. He's, he's got the gift of a, a, a photographic mind. And mm. uh, so he just, he just, he's, he's, he's as knowledgeable as any physician is on, on, on the subject. Uh, there's actually a two other, there's one interview with uh, uh, Keith. Uh, oh shit. What's his name? Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the earlier episodes. Uh, Keith uh, Nicholson. Uh, uh, he's a, a, a doc, he's a he's an anti aging doctor, and we go into great length about uh, those changes. And then uh, uh, Scott Howell, I've done several in uh, interviews. He's an androgen expert. He's a former bodybuilder, PhD. Again, uh, just off the charts, brilliant. I mean, just the guy. Actually, you know, you're a data guy. I'm not a data guy, uh, but 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 uh, you know. Uh, Scott actually looks at the looks at the uh, when he reads a, a scientific article, he actually looks at the the charts, the data, and analyzes the actual data to see if it actually if what the author writes is actually what the data shows in their article. So he's I mean he's he's that detail oriented, smart, uh, he, smart, yeah, smart yeah, man, yeah. smart man. Yeah, because- yeah. Oh, yeah. Because uh, let me tell you, the, the, the data is basically what matters, right? It depends on the perspective of it. And anybody that's even, you know, decent with data can come to their right of conclusion that will suit their suit the outcome they're hoping to get across. So that, that's a that's oh, yeah, a smart yeah. man there. Yeah, I think the, 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 the uh, what's what's the expression? Uh, science is settled. Bullshit. <laughs> it's, it's constantly evolving. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not so. I mean, you just look at some of the things that you know we we're we we're told, you know, like oh, you're gonna salt's gonna give you a uh, uh, high blood pressure. Well, that's not true. Uh, then the other thing uh, lately, uh, so, so where where did I see this? Where did I see this? Uh, the uh, the FDA, whoever da, da, does the food pyramid, mm. and and so they got they have like I think it's chocolate colored raisins healthier than than um, than meat. Like, are you kidding me? And, and it's, I think it's I think it's a lot of it is funded from uh, by uh, uh, cereal companies. Uh, so you got all these all these all these high carbohydrate sugar things, and and we, we we've learned 
I, I just came upon this by accident where I started eating pasta and uh, low fat uh, uh, spaghetti sauce. And I started putting on weight. I was mm. like, and, and then I switched to, and, and this, is, this is a horrible example. This is when I, I was in my 30s. I can't do this now. But then I started eating uh, thin crust uh, pizza from Pizza Hut. Mm. And my weight started going down because that's actually, uh, that's actually to a certain extent, it's ketogenic. Because mm. you got you got you got all the fat, you got all the meat, and yep. you have a very very little uh, carbohydrate on, on the thin crust. Uh, so it, it was kind of funny how that, that was working on, and that would have been totally contrary to what everyone else was telling me. But uh, yeah, the, the, I would just those things, and and the, uh, get to get Jay's book, uh, I think uh, is would be really things. Like I said, there's about five or six uh, interviews I've done on testosterone, and they're they're all even though some of them are a little bit over a year old. Um, the, the information is all valid as I remember what we had spoken about. Uh, it, it's still there. Well, definitely. I want to want to check that out and, uh, I'll, you know, take a look and hopefully the audience will check out some of those too. Um, well, I think some of the things that you're bringing up though, it starts to lead into a lot of, and I can start to see it more now of what you, what you do now, as far as being, you know, you're in, you know, anti-aging and being ultimately a, a men's a men's coach, right? Or is, right. I don't know if it's just men. Is it just men you work with, or I, I just just work with men because okay. I spend a lot of time talking about uh, in my in my coaching program. We talk a lot about uh, uh, masculinity. Yeah. So so uh, and I just don't feel I I don't I think uh, coaching women is a whole different deal. I, I know there's men that actually do it and do actually a very good job of it. Uh, but it's just, uh, I just, I, I spend so much time talking about masculinity mm. uh, because that's a lot of guys have, have lost their masculinity and I have too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Mr. Perfect. And there were times that I was, I was just uh, uh, playing the victim card and all that other shit uh, that people do all the time and having really bad conversations in my head that were not serving me well and did not produce res the results that I was looking at. So uh I'm sorry. Can I interrupt you one second? Sure. It, masculinity, right? Yeah. As we start to go down that path, what, what do you, what do you describe that as? Like, I know a lot of people throw that word around. You said we hear masculinity. What, in your opinion, what is masculinity? I think first of all, uh, a big component of it uh, is being a gentleman. I think that, that's you know, masculinity is is not being the loudest person in the world in the in the room, but sometimes that you are that. Uh, masculinity is about being strong, about being a leader, uh, about being a good person in general. Uh, also about be, being able to take care of your stuff, taking care of uh, events, uh, and stepping up for what's right in, in a situation. Uh, it's also about your personal strength and your mental strength. I think those are those are the things that really come to mind. I think the 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 the, the thing about uh, you know masculine toxicity, which I think is total bullshit. Uh, people that have toxic personalities that are male are called assholes, and and women that have toxic personality are called bitches, and and that's you know uh, there's plenty of both in both sexes. So, you know, it's, it's people, people use this word masculine toxicity. They want to, they want to put you on the defensive. And mm. I was like, screw you. I'm so, not, not going to apologize for being a man. And we shouldn't. Right. So, yeah. so I, I love your answer as to what it is. Right. So, so what do you think that what's the big reason now? I mean, I have my own thoughts, but why as a society, why as men are we starting to lose, lose it and not just lose it. We think that we should lose it. Well, yeah. I mean, there's, there's this whole, uh, obviously, you know, kind of offshoot from uh, universities and women's studies programs and things like that. And they try to, you know, uh, make, make it evil. Uh, Christina Summers Hoff wrote a book, uh, the war against boys and there is this, this this war, you know, like oh, you know, uh, he's you know he's a toxic man, you know, you know uh, maybe because you go hunting or you go do something like that or whatever. Uh, but if it's if if there's a thunderstorm and it's raining outside, uh, 
you're probably looking for, uh, and, and the power's going out of your house, you're probably looking for someone that you would describe as a toxic male to go up on that that uh, utility pole in that bad weather and, and, and fix it. Uh, you, you know, it, it's, a, uh, it's, it's an interesting phenomenon. And the part of it also is this, this thing about not um, taking care of stuff. And I, I think I, I was talking with someone about this on one of my podcasts, how we are now conditioned to, uh, our children are now conditioned to not defend themselves. You know, you can't defend yourself. That's, that's, that's viewed as bad. You have to go find a, a teacher. Well, a teacher is not always there. Uh, and to a certain extent, you need to be able to, to look out for yourself. And if you, if you be, become habitually addicted to have, needing help all the time, then you become weak. And people being weak, male or female, is not good uh, because that makes them more susceptible to predators. And there are predators out there in, in, in various areas. And so, uh, you know, I, there was like this one story about this kid was being uh, bullied by someone and, and he just turned around and just, and just smacked him. Uh, but he was actually being physically assaulted too. And he was, you know, he, he was suspended, you know, by some loony school administrator. Yeah. You know. It's, um, it's definitely, I mean, I, I know growing up for myself, you know, I just, I remember this story vividly. I know, I remember the bully of the neighborhood. You know, yeah, you know, I'm probably like eight years old and he, you know, he comes, punches me, you know, I kind of go into the house, you know, brushing off my wounds. I'm upset and my mom's in the house and, you know, I'm going in there thinking I'm going to get comforted. And, you know, she's like, okay, come here. You know, she cleaned, helped me clean up, start walking me like, where are we going? She's like, oh, I'm, you're going back outside. She's like, you're going to go out there and you're going to, you're going to confront him. Sent me right back out. And I, I still tell the story because that was the day where I, you know what, from that day on, I always say to everybody, I know I'm not the toughest man in the world, but you know what? I will never back down and it is what it is. And that was my mom who put that out there. You know, I would have never went into my dad cause I know my dad would have sent me right back out there. Right. You know, but even my mom, <laughs> sent me right back out. And it was a big thing growing up when I did in the seventies, early eighties in my neighborhood was if you allow people to constantly take advantage of you, advantage of you and bully you, it doesn't even matter if you win the fight, as long as you fight back, they'll have respect and they'll be less likely to make you a target. And sure. that was the way we were raised. And I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, I tell that proudly, you know, some people might hear that story and go, Oh, that's awful. Your mom sent you back out to fight. Yeah, 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 she did. You know, yeah. and you know, she was, I'll say this, she was actually proud of me when I came back in. She said, good job. And that was, that was it. But yeah, I don't think, I think to your point, it starts to get how we start to lose our masculinity, right? It's kind of even at a young age where we're not things like that, right? Like it's, and I'm not saying a kid should be out there fighting or, having physical contact, you know, but you know what? They should have confidence to be able to defend themselves and it'll make them a more productive and a better person. That's why I'm such a firm believer in, you know, martial arts and things like that. You know, like my, my son wrestled in high school and college and is now a, an amateur MMA fighter. You know, like I don't, I don't look at that type of physical activity as a bad thing, right? To me, that is, that's a good thing, you know? So, yeah. so do you think though, as we start to lose the masculinity, so to speak, right? Again, I think we can start to tie it back into that whole testosterone thing though. Don't, do, would you agree? Oh yeah. 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 You know, it, it's kind of interesting because you'd be surprised, especially in, in the younger men, uh, that how, how often they are. And you, you can't even really tell by appearance. Um, so it's, it's fairly common. I was talking to a, a young man, Everybody's young to me, you know, uh, but he's in his thirties. Uh, and he's a fireman, and he said he he told me he said like he said I and this guy you know all firemen are pretty buff, you know I mean they're because they got they got to do hard physical stuff all the time. And they got to be mm -hmm. able to do it in 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 bad conditions, 
Um, and he was telling me about how miserable he was, you know, when he, when he wasn't on testosterone and how, how his wife didn't like him when he wasn't on testosterone. Uh, so, uh, you know, so, so I, I do believe that that is, a, a you know, testosterone is what makes you man. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, you know, it, it, it helps you keep muscle mass on, helps you keep fat off. Helps you with your bone density. Helps you with your uh, cardiovascular health. Uh, helps you with your uh, decisiveness. And the other thing is, is your attitude. As I mm-hmm. mentioned earlier, that story about when I went to New Zealand. And I know I know several men who who have been on testosterone and got off. Uh, one in particular was like really panicking that he uh, he was told to get off, and then he kind of found a way around it. But uh, it's it's uh, uh, you notice after being on it for so long. Charles, I don't notice it so much unless I go off of it. Mm. You know, I mean, I've kind of, kind of, this is, this is my, this is my new normal, you know, and, uh, and so fortunately, uh, you know, things, things are, are going well in, in that realm, but I'm doing things like in the gym that I should not be doing. Uh, I mean, I'm working my way. I had an injury, but I'm working back up to, to doing hundred pound dumbbells bench press. Um, I mean, at, at 70 years old, I mean, uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I enjoy, and I enjoy the spectacle of it because people kind of go like, holy crap. <laughs> that's, that's very impressive. I know me, I'm working towards a 500 pound deadlift, you know, I'm at like four, uh-huh. 460. Um, and you know, I think to your point, I look at myself, like I'm in my, I, I say, you know, I'm in my fifties. I think that's a, a good thing, but, um, you know, I, as we, to end a little bit on the masculinity, I think though, the thing that you said that really stuck out to me was you started it off and describing masculinity as being a gentleman. And Mm -hmm. I think that's really important and that people understand that because I think there is a lot of people out there, men out there who they think of masculinity They don't put it all together, right? They take components of masculinity and they kind of go out, I'll say it on a tear, right? They're so overly aggressive and things like that, right? And I think that's what starts to give it a bad name. And I don't think people realize, that's why I asked you that question. I think masculinity is a combination of all those things you said and the balance of it. And I think it's very, it's something that us as men, we should be, we should absolutely be fighting for. And is that to lead into this next point? Is that what you find you're doing now as a coach? Are you helping men really rediscover that masculinity, keep that masculinity? Is that what a lot of people come to you for? Um, Yeah, I, it's, it's not just the masculinity. It's it's the whole thing. Um, Well, a lot of time, and I tend to, I tend to work with men that are uh, successful financially. So I don't really get into that very, very much, uh, Quite frankly, a lot of them make more shit well more money than I do. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's, it's kind of like I, I always tell my kids and everyone else, be careful who you take advice from. Uh, and this, guy, this sounds arrogant, but I don't take financial advice from someone that lives in a smaller house than I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you know, which, uh, so, uh, so, so what I was what I was uh, getting at is that, is that in my program. Um, what I focus on a couple of things. We start off. There's a combination. Uh, there's an on-demand uh, video portion to it that you can do in your own time. Usually about a, a, se- a section a week, and then then we have a, a weekly meetings uh, where I call them accountability calls. And if you check out my uh, my uh, featured posts on LinkedIn, you'll see a few uh, testimonials from from some people uh, about what it's like to uh, to work with me. Um, but first of all, the first thing we do is identify what you want. And then we talk about why, and then the how is the last thing, uh, we talk about conversations in your head and how to, uh, ask the right questions of yourself. Uh, talk about using fear, uh, talk about journaling, meditation, uh, and then get crystallized on what you want in terms of your, uh, fitness, your relationships, uh, and, uh, and so we spent a little time with that. We'll talk a little bit about finances too. Uh, and then the, the, uh, last segment, uh, the thing that people argue about couples argue about the most is 
sex and money. Okay. And so if you got the money part down, then, then the thing you argue the most about probably with your significant other is sex. And so the, my, my last module uh, is titled how to get laid more frequently without begging. And, uh, and, I, and, and, and my wife says, 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 you know, she knows I, I talk about this and she said, well, you're going to have to talk about, it. uh, we were in, in a no sex marriage, you know, it was essentially where we didn't have any, uh, we weren't having sex or very infrequent. I think there's some several definitions, but one of them is having sex less than six times a year. Uh, so we were in, in, in one of those situations and I had to take a look and see who I had become. Uh, I can't, I can't change. I, I had to change who I was in order to improve that situation. Mm. And, you know, I, there's ways of doing it and it's not begging for sex. Okay. Mercy sex is never particularly good. Uh, so, so there's, there's things that, that you can do and we, and I go through a lot of them and, you know, it depends on where you are in your relationship. You know, if you got a good relationship, well, you can get to great pretty quickly. But if your relationship is a shit show, it's going to take a while because it didn't that didn't happen overnight. Mm-hmm. And it's not it's not going to, it's not going to get taken care of overnight. It can be taken care of, and it it's really requires uh, it requires work. Mm-hmm. And and there and then there are times, and I I don't advise anyone to get a divorce or not get a divorce. That's that's up to you. But there are times that people just are not, they, they can never make it back. Hmm. But if you but if you if you if you're on your third wife and you're thinking about number four, you're probably essentially have married the same person with a different first name. Hmm. They're probably all very similar. <laughs> and, 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 you know what I mean? You, you see that all the time. Uh, you know, the guy's like, oh, here's my new wife. Oh gosh, she, she reminds me of your old wife a lot. <laughs> she has a different name, but she reminds me of it. Uh, and, and so, yeah, it becomes, it becomes a, a vicious cycle. So, so that's kind of the, the gist of it. The biggest thing is actually the, the accountability program, mm-hmm. uh, because we've all gone to meetings and, you know, we get all jacked up, motivated and, uh, you know, they give, give you a journal and, you know, you write it, maybe give you a t-shirt and a pen and you you know you stand you go in a room and they got classic rock ACDC Aerosmith you know all that playing and thumping and jumping up and down doing burpees looking into each other's eyes and see, saying meaningful shit and then you come home and you take those notes that you meticulously took and you, and you put them on a bookshelf mm-hmm. and then they sit it, you know there yeah. they sit collecting dust yeah, uh, so anyway, like I said we've we've all done that. So, so the biggest part of my coaching program is the accountability part, uh, because you know, I mean, the the materials, the video materials are good. Are they the best that are out there? I don't know, but but the biggest part is the accountability program. Mm. Annette, you know, you said something about you would never take financial advice from somebody who has a smaller house than you. Mm-hmm. I would turn that around, and then I would say to folks watching this, I wouldn't want to take coaching advice about becoming a better person from anybody who's not willing to do self reflection and take accountability mm-hmm. on themselves, which you obviously have done and are willing to do. So I think right there, that leads to something that I think is important, especially for what you do credibility. And mm-hmm. to me, that answers the biggest question. If I'm looking to come to someone like you is how, how credible is this person? And are they willing to do the things that they're, have they done the things or are they willing to do what they're asking me to do? So, I mean, kudos to you for that. I think that's the most important part. Yeah. You know, Charles, I appreciate the compliment. And then this kind of makes me think about uh, when we talk about uh, functional medicine physicians, uh, anti-aging doctors, you bet they, they better look like you better want to look like they do. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I mean, if you're going to the to, to disease doctor, I don't care if, if they're fat, if they're the best person who does a, a heart valve transplant. Great. It doesn't matter. But if they're t- they're talking to you about getting you healthy. Uh, they better be able to to be healthy themselves. It's, yeah. And, and so so uh, true. So true. Well, I really think you bring up that's it's some great points. Uh-huh. And it's been 
been fantastic to have this kind of open dialogue. And I, and again, it goes back to your own podcast, old guy, old guy talks, right. Talks to me. And, old, old, old guy talks to me. Right. And listen, I think, and I heard a comedian say this before I forget his name, but he said, as an old guy talking to a young guy, the first thing you say to them is I'm coming to you from your future. You can heed my <laughs> warnings or let it go in one ear out the other. But if you don't listen to me and I'm in bad shape, there's a really good chance that you're going to be in as bad or worse shape than I am. And I think it's true. So I think you've, you've had a lot of life experience that is valuable to people. You come across and you say things that need to be said. So I, again, I commend you on that. So thank you for that. All right. Thank you, Charles. It's very gracious. Yeah. So now again, Let's just take care of some of the final notes here. I want to make sure where are the best spots that people can find you. I'm going to put a lot in the show notes, all that good stuff. But, you okay. know. Uh, yeah, I spend more of my time on LinkedIn than I do on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you do a Google or, or search Oris Kramernitsky, uh, and, and I, I, I'll, I'll send you my, my all my links. Uh, I spend a little time on Twitter, but not really that much. Uh, you can find more about the standard uh, by going to the, the standard.academy. And uh, actually, I have a digital magazine. So you go to standard.academy mm -hmm. forward slash magazine, and uh, you can get my free digital magazine, uh, which one of the major articles got seven, eight articles by uh, people that actually have been on my podcast. Uh, so we got, we got that. And then the, you, you can find me at the standard.academy. Uh, and my podcast, again, this old guy talks to me. And uh, get my free digital magazine. And uh, they'll they'll put you on a list to get the uh, information about my podcast and, and some other stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we, you know, like I said, I'm having a really good time at this point in my life. I'm doing what I want to do. So you know, even though I'm working a lot, uh, it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't feel like work. But other times it does feel like work. <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> there are times that like um, you know, somebody once said uh, a good portion of success is getting up and doing things that you don't want to do, but you know, you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's so, so true. Well, listen, I think you're, I mean, honestly, I think people are, should be checking you out more. I know I'm, I'm glad we finally had a, a chance to catch up here. Give me 30 seconds here. Try to catch you off guard. You have 30 seconds to, kind of give somebody some advice to, you know, inspire them, what would you say? I would say, you sure you can clearly articulate with specificity what you want. And do not be trapped into the whole concept of, I should be doing something. But I think most, I think a lot of people can't clearly articulate what they want with specificity. You know what? That's that's really poignant, and I think it's excellent advice. So, listen again. This has been great. I hope everybody enjoys it. And I thank you again, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been fun. Thank you. And listen, I hope everybody enjoys this. And and please, especially for the men watching this, it's you know as you're, especially as you're aging, look into that your testosterone levels. And you know what? Your masculinity, it's it's natural, and we we need to. Own it and be men. So thanks a lot. Everyone this take care. This has been the Bye. Bear Essentials. Thanks for listening. And remember, never hibernate on your goals.